Welcome back to another episode of Investing Explained. Here's today's question. Man, I'd like to say it was very strategic and we had like this whole plan. (laughs) (laughs) The fact of the matter is, is it was none of that. This is my vantage point. I'm kind of curious if Stig sees it the same way. So I started the Buffett's books videos, the website, and stood up a forum. And on the early days of the forum, it was kind of me and and like two people talking on the forum about accounting. And one day, this guy named Stig shows up. And, you know, we're probably posting comments that are four sentences long, like, oh, yeah, I like General Electric or I like this company. And, this guy shows up and all he wants to talk about is oil. And not only is it a, is it a post about oil, but it's like a five-page analysis just going into detail all about oil. And he just kept talking and each post just got longer and longer and longer. And I was like, who in the world is this guy? And so... After, I don't know, after a few months of watching his posts on this forum and kind of talking back and forth, I shot him a personal message and I said, hey, tell me about yourself, whatever. And so he's like, oh, you know, I studied at Harvard and this and that. And I was like, wow, this guy, he's a pretty interesting guy. And so I was in the process of writing an accounting book at the time, but was really having, I was struggling with time and I was not able to get it across the finish line. And it was just like, this is never going to get done. But based on how this guy writes and he seems really, really aggressive in really wanting to be a part of anything finance related. So I reached out to him. I was like, hey, do you want to finish this book or work with me on getting this book done? And he came back. He's like, absolutely, let's do it. And so Stig and I finished writing the um, Warren Buffett accounting book together. And we ended up publishing that book together. And this was right at the point where the podcasting stuff was starting to become really popular. And so I said to Stig, I said, you know, I think this would be a lot of fun. We could just record conversation. Like you and I could just have conversations about finance, about what stocks we're looking at. We'll record it. And if we have five people that listen to it, we have five people that listen to it. I said, at the end of the day, it'll just be fun for us to have conversations about something we're learning. If we're reading a book, we can talk about that or whatever. And so Stig was just like, I don't have like a real radio voice, but I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so we we just started recording our conversations. You know, one thing led to another and here we are and, and there's people that actually listen to this. So I would like to say it was something that we had planned, but it really wasn't. It was just something that we did for fun and we kept doing for fun. And then it just slowly turned into a business. And so the thing that I would tell people about, at least from our vantage point, from our story is if it's not something that you are willing to I'll give you a perfect example. This episode right now, I woke up at 4.45 to record this episode. You have to love what you're doing to do that. There has never been a day where I've just dreaded doing this. Like this is just fun for me. And I think Stig would tell you the same thing. It's just it's just a lot of fun. This is what we love to do. We love to sit around and talk about an income statement. That is not normal for most people. Most people would <laughs> absolutely hate that. And so you got to find a person who just absolutely loves the business or the product or whatever it is you're working on just as much as you, because if they don't, it's just not going to work in the long term. Two years in, they are going to be so sick of whatever it is that they're doing that is just not going to last. So I think finding a partner that has the same passion and the same interest as you is extremely difficult to do. Now, one other thing that I think was a big advantage for Stig and I is Because we have read so many books together, we have a very, very similar mindset on how our business should be run. It's almost hilarious how Stig will come to me and say, I think we should do this. And be like, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. And vice versa. I'll go to him and say, hey, I think this is a bad idea. And he'll be like, yeah, you're probably right. Let's not do that. And I I think one of the reasons why, and that can be bad at times because you need to have some friction points at certain points in time. But as far as the ease of like running a business, it is really nice to have a person who's grounded in a lot of the same fundamentals. And so I guess what I would tell you is 
if you're looking for a co-founder or you're looking for somebody to do the business with, I would highly encourage you to try to read some of the same books, especially if they're good core fundamental books, because you're just going to be in sync with each other. And I think that that's really important to kind of have that framework. There's a saying, I don't know where it comes from, but it says, if you want to go far, you're going to go together. If you want to go fast, go alone. And I think that that's really representative of whatever your interest are of starting a business. You got to kind of understand that mindset. If you're going really far, I think having a partner is really, really good. It's really hard to find the right person. And I just want to say this publicly. I really, really treasure my relationship with Stig. It is, man, I'm, I feel so blessed and so lucky. So Stig, I know I just took <laughs> all the time, but let's hear your vantage point. So I experienced this completely different than you. No, I, I, I didn't at all. Press. I think you described the story very well. Typically, when people ask, I always say that we met online because then people are always like, oh my God, <laughs> what, what, what happened there? But we kind of met online in the sense that we met on the online forum. You know, you created Buffett's books and that's how we started to chat. And I think that was very fortunate. And in the way, I also think we create our own luck in the sense that who sits and talk about accounting on an online forum. I think you said some, something about it being serendipitous at some point in time, you know, just before we started the podcast. But, you know, sometimes I think back on that and be like, no, Preston, if you can find two people in the world who wants to talk about accounting and gap rules on an online forum in writing, it's not serendipitous. You're just two sad people with too much time. <laughs> so <laughs> perhaps that's more it. I almost feel bad about playing this question, you know, and talking about how person I met after having four questions about Michael Dell. It's probably not a fair comparison. The one thing I would say that the red thread here is really that he was having a lot of fun. He started this business up because it was a lot of fun. Then he realized he could also make money and, you know, he started growing and made a bunch of money. But it has to be fun whenever you start. Don't find a business partner or start by yourself to to make money. You know, if, if you start up by having fun, perhaps you will make money, most likely not, but it's not going to be the other way around. It's not going to be fun if it's not fun to begin with. That was also one of the things that we talked about, Preston, when we started that it had to be fun, first of all, then see where, where it takes us. Because going back to the old forum, which is not even online anymore, I wrote over a thousand posts over a thousand posts about accounting. Oh my God. And about oral, apparently also, I remember that, that specific thread you talked about. In my defense, if people were saying, stick has no life, it's absolutely true. So it's not really in my defense. I was on a one year God leave for a job. I was technically not permitted to work or to do anything for a year. I was permitted though, to sit and talk about accounting in the forum. I had a lot of time on my hands. And whenever I stumbled across this forum with people who were just like-minded, I was I had this idea, if you just kept on giving, something good will come back to me. And that was you, Preston. No, and that's such a true statement. If you're just doing something because you love doing it and you're just trying to make a better impact, I think that everything else will kind of fall in place. I think when a person is chasing money, maybe they're starting a business because they want to make a lot of money. What you often find is if they're successful, because sometimes people can be successful and their pure motivation was to make money, and but their success is usually short-lived. What kind of falls out of some of those motivations is the person wants to make even more money. So then they go out and they raise venture capital. Next thing you know, they only own 5% of the business and they got some venture capital person that's breathing down their throat. They're absolutely miserable. They, they're in a position where they've made a lot of money, but it was just a completely miserable experience for five years or 10 years. Some people would say, hey, I'll take that. And that's fine. There's people out there that that fits their motivation. That's not something I ever want to go through. I want to be happy. I want to enjoy my time with my family. I want to uh, have an impact. And so for us, this was a great fit and it was very casually put together and just kind of happened. You know, listen to some of Michael Dell's comments because Stig's exactly right. This is not about Stig and I, but it's more about Michael Dell. I get the sense from his response that he absolutely loved this stuff that he was doing. He was having a blast when he's telling the stories about back in the day when he's in college. He wasn't enjoying his classes. He was enjoying the stuff he was doing with creating hardware and selling it and having an impact in that way. So you got to take a look at yourself. What is it that you love to do? 
and really kind of make sure that something is centered around that. Because if it's not, I just, I think it's hard for people to sustain the motivation to go through it. One thing I would like to add, because you specifically talked about how do you find that other part and or what kind of skills should he or she possess? I would say that I would not find a person who would compliment me. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, especially in this day and age where, especially here in the Western world, you know, we have a culture where everyone has to have high self-worth. We celebrate diversity. Everyone is good at something. No one is, is bad at anything. It's all about, you know, complimenting each other. There's a lot of good reasons why that's true. But I would think in terms of finding a business partner, it's okay to have a ton of different blind spots. You know, it's, it's okay that you have a business partner and you still don't know how to do accounting or combined, you still don't know how to do design. I think that's completely fine. I think the one thing you need to look for in a business partner is having this narrow focus and how can you together become 5% better than anyone else so you can get that 10x, 100x return because you are better together that specific item. That's it. Presto and I will continue explaining investing, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button.